Hey guys, welcome back. We're uh, we're here with Brad Harmon, um, ex Phillies Major League Baseball um, organizational player. Thank you so much for taking the time. Not a problem. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, cool. Um, so we're going to del delve into um, what makes Brad tick a little bit, and uh, find out a little bit more about what it's like to be an elite athlete. So, Brad, why baseball? Uh, I suppose my dad coached uh, and played back when he was younger, so ever since I was a, a little fella, I was running around a baseball field, I was always down there. Dad was always always at the field coaching, he still coaches today, so um, I suppose I had a choice, but I was always down at the baseball field, so I might as well run around with a bat and ball in my hand and, and do that, so it just sort of went from there. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And so it's been in your blood for, for ages, ever since you were pretty much born, I guess. Yeah, I was basically walking around, first steps with a ball in my hand. So <laughs> um, as I say, I, I suppose I had a choice, but it, it was just something that was always there, always with me. I was always at the baseball field with Dad, um, just running around, causing trouble. So yeah, I just did it ever since I was walking, basically. Cool. And so where are you now? Um, now I'm just here based based in Melbourne. I've got a got a young family myself. Got a two year old boy, um, so that he keeps me nice and busy. But you know, just full time work, um, and I just get the opportunity to come out here and play for the Melbourne Aces during the summer. Um, but yeah, basically just living a, a relatively normal life these days. Yeah, that's fair enough too. Um, so, what's the number one lesson that you learned throughout being an elite athlete? Uh, yeah, it's I suppose it's hard to I suppose keyhole one one lesson but the biggest thing is to um for me now that i look back is just realizing i suppose how hard it is and even when when things are, are going well so i spent six years over in over in the states with the phillies organization and even when things are going well when you've got time to reflect you you realize that okay this is going really well for myself but you know my family aren't here my friends aren't here so there's always an element of uh, an obstacle or a hardship to always try and overcome. So just trying to stay as balanced as can be and, and enjoy the good times with the bad um, is probably the biggest thing, biggest thing for me, I think. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell just what you're talking about. It's, you're kind of alone, I guess. Well, you are. I mean, I went over, as, as a lot of the Australians do playing professional baseball, as a, an 18-year-old kid and you're thrown in making very, very little money. Um, my first contract was $850 a month, of which after your food and your accommodation's taken out, I think you get about $140 every two weeks to, to live. So everything's covered and meals are covered, but $140. So, that you know, there was times as an 18-year-old kid that I, and I had to call back mum and ask her to transfer $50 and things like that. So, you know, you're all the way around the world chasing my dream, I suppose, but you so... You are alone and you're on your own. You, you try and obviously gravitate. I was lucky to have two Australians with me in my first my first year, so that made things a little bit easier. But you just learn to grow up really quickly uh, and, and fend for yourself and no one's making sure you're doing the right things away from the field. It's, um, I suppose the baseball mentality is if you're good enough and you're smart enough, you'll, you'll make it, you'll figure it out. And yeah. the ones that don't, um, they might stuff up outside or off the field or they're not quite good enough. They just get cut away and the next guys come in. So it's grow up quick or, or find yourself uh, packing your bags going home. I'm just wondering if I, if I can ask you a, a question that isn't on our list. Um, based on what you just said then, do you feel like you were part of a business? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Definitely. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, if you, if you look at the top, the the millions and millions of dollars that are being spent and they're there to win world series mm -hmm. so it's hard to try and understand that when you're in your first year and it's not something you learn until later on but um the way guys get shipped in and out at the end of at the end of a spring training at the start of the year that goes for a month you you see 70 guys 60 70 guys just get cut over the last sort of week and they're gone nice to know you off you go New guys come in in a couple of months' time when the draft comes around. So, at the end of the day, they're there to, to win championships, which means find the best players, try and identify which ones are the best of those best, um, and really put the time, the work into those guys, allow them to to develop, um, and hopefully help help the big league club. So, yeah, you do learn it's a it's a business, and as as soon as you you've got to accept that, but without taking the love and the passion for the game out, which is really difficult. That's a that's an extreme challenge in itself. What a balancing act that would be. Yeah. That would be very tough. So 
Um, one question that sort of come up that that people are sort of asking um, us to ask our athletes that we um, that we interview is what sort of things did you have to sacrifice, either it be personal or from a sporting sense, and the challenges that you may have come come up with and come up to face during your career and, and post career. I suppose to be to be fair, not. Not a great deal. It's really the the family side of things and being away from home and um, missing out on on family events. And then um, you know I'm married now, but my girlfriend at the time. So those things become two things: missing her family, things. Those sorts of things are, are what I suppose I sacrificed. Just the time that was spent away away from home. Um, Apart from that, I think baseball has given me a lot more than, than what it's taken away from me. So I've been really fortunate in that regard to, to do the things I've done, go where I've been, um, achieve what I've achieved. Um, but yeah, I suppose, not look, to be honest, not too many sacrifices. It's just time, but a lot of that time is spent doing the work that allowed me to do what I did um, and achieve what I achieved. So I wouldn't say I sacrificed too much to a degree. Yep. And, and post, and if you don't mind me asking, post your professional career now, what sort of challenges have you had to overcome from a personal perspective? I suppose it's just finding yourself. I mean, since I... Since I was, you know, running around playing baseball, which, uh, you know, was since I could walk, all I wanted to do was play play Major League Baseball. So that was the that was the goal. There was little stepping stones along the way, and then once that's done, and I suppose it's it's taken away from you, it was taken away from me in the sense that I wasn't offered another contract, so it wasn't my choice to to walk away. Um, it's it's then just finding yourself and what's next. And I've done done some some really cool things and. Um, you know, being able to get married, start a family, I've got a, an awesome young boy at home, but it's that end goal, I suppose, where baseball was just, was life for so long. And now, as I say, unbelievably happy with, with the way things are at home, but there's always something that I strived for. And now that's gone, it's what's next. And I suppose it's putting that focus into the into the family. But I think a lot of athletes would understand that there's just something missing, and it's yeah. finding what else am I am I driving to do. So I've got my my family life, and I'm doing things for my family. But I suppose we're really selfish at times, athletes, yeah. and we've got something that we are striving for, and we're working for for ourselves. And not having anything can be can be a real challenge. Yeah. Yeah, and that's sort of the, the common theme that, that we're having with all our athletes that we're interviewing is that, that same sort of thing. Um, where am I now? Where am I going? Where, where am I putting my energy? Um, so thank you for that. Yeah. Um, from a, a role model and mentor perspective, um, is there any that have shone for you that have given you something? What have they given you? Um, look, I was always... I, I suppose I always just looked up to people that were there at the top mm -hmm. um you know through my through my younger junior days i mean my dad was a big influence on me early on and and was always helping coaching um trying to get me trying to get me better and he taught me a lot about the game um then i moved into our victorian institute of sport program where matthew sheldon collins was the the head coach and he certainly drove me to um become uh, I suppose as driven as I needed to be and understand what it what it took and he was pretty pretty firm firm on me which looking back was a was a good thing and helped me um, develop and do what I needed to do but I suppose I just always aspired to to be a major league baseball player so when I watched games on TV they were they were all my role models and I, I just wanted to do I kind of knew that you just got to work your butt off um, so that was my, my main focus was to just do everything I could and, and hopefully be one of those people that I aspired to be. Wow, yeah, cool. Um, and I have to read this question because it's a tongue twister every time, and I'm sure that people are laughing at me right now. <laughs> Knowing what you know now, what do you wish you knew back then? Um, yeah, probably quite a few things. Um, I suppose the the biggest thing and something that I've learned now in my last sort of three three to four years playing on the Aces team since um, obviously pro ball has passed and gone and it's understanding with a team sport like baseball how being a good teammate is going to help you personally. Baseball is a really interesting sport. You touched on it being a business and um, I'm sure if you speak to a lot of guys and I was this way too, I'd prefer a pro ball team to finish dead last if I could have a batting average of 340 because it would mean I would progress and yeah. be one step closer to my goal um, as opposed to winning a championship and hitting 200. Um, you know, that it becomes a real, a real battle and I did hit 200 and there was a lot of battles along the way and um, 
So I think if I could go back, I would try and become more complete as a, as a baseball player. And there's so many aspects to that where being a good teammate, the things I did away from the, away from the field, the nutrition, the gym, all those sorts of things tying together. But I was so focused on myself, whether I had a good night, you know, and, and the way that affected me um, beyond that was, I suppose, looking back, it was obviously very tough and challenging at the time, but I wish I had focused a little bit more on the team side of things because I think that now I do that here and I've got a bit of a rule with myself where if I make, make an out at, at the plate, I've got to sort of say something to the next guy batting. Now, I would never have done that when I was playing Pro Bowl because me going 0 for 4 and then going 0 for 4 again is going to hurt my chances of succeeding and I could find myself on the way home. Yeah. So I'm thinking about what can I do to get better. But I found focusing, being more of a team person, allowed me to pull myself out of that quickly and focus my energy back out on the field and sort of stay upbeat and stay positive um, as best I could through those hard times. So I think if I just knew how important it was to be a, be a team person and a good teammate, I wish I had have done that a lot earlier. Yeah, wow. Yeah, thank you so much for being so honest there. I really appreciate that. Um, and, it's, and, I, and I would imagine that it would be a tough shift and because you're coming into an organisation where it's that's the way it is. Mm. Um, if you're going to be good at anything, you kind of have to look after the core first. Yeah, and if, if you don't, you as I say, the last week of spring, 50, 60, 70 guys are finding their, you know, packing their bags and going home. So you, you've got to be selfish and, and want success for yourself because otherwise you're going back home and your dream's over. Mm. So th there's definitely has to be that element of that, but... The, the teammate um, friendship aspect of things and, and caring for others and wanting them to do well. So in baseball, when that guy does well, he's going to take my job. Yeah. So there's an element of, well, I want you to do well, but I don't because I want to make the big leagues mm. and, you know, and, and go on and live my dream and um, achieve what I've always wanted to achieve. So it's a, it's a fine balancing act, but by being that teammate is going to help you, I suppose, and I think it would have helped me, and it does now while I still play, quickly get back up rather than sitting at the end of the bench being a bad teammate sulking about the at bat or you know the 0 for 20 that I'm in um, I feel like it would have helped me to be a good teammate which is yeah the big thing yeah cool um, and and finally last last question is there any advice that you have for for any of you who are out there from a life perspective from a, an athlete perspective and maybe an athlete retiring um, is there anything that you can give us well, I suppose there's plenty on, on all aspects really, but um, the big thing and, and something that I'm still working on now is just to, I suppose, try and find balance in everything that you do. So, um, you know, I can remember when I was struggling and all I would wanted to do, all I wanted to do was work harder and I actually read something the other day um, on Facebook about how you, you've just got to put the work in until it gets better. But I think looking back, when I was struggling, I, I would work my tail off and my wife would come over, girlfriend at the time, but she would come over and I would be struggling and I would make her sit in the cage after the game while I took a hundred swings off the tee and she'd just sit there and read a book and, you know, so I was doing what I thought was necessary to get better um, and then I'd go back and everyone was already gone home and I'd have my shower and we'd go home at midnight. Um, I was doing what I thought it took to get better, but in hindsight, I probably had to step away at those times. So it's a really fine line, but finding, finding balance, and as I say, it's, that's so wide ranging, but being a good teammate, doing the right things away from the field, allowing yourself to enjoy the good times, um, and then understand the bad, the bad times, and I suppose respond to it. There was a, the, the saying, I suppose, of, when you're going good, you're not going that good. And when you're going bad, you're not going that bad. And I, I always thought about that. And I was pretty good at, when I was going good, I, I didn't allow myself to enjoy it too much. I kind of thought, yeah, but I, I can do better. And then when I was going bad, I really took that to heart. And I, I, was, I had a tough time thinking, well, it's not that bad. And I suppose towards the back end of my career, um, to go to, a, I suppose, another point, um, I really, I really struck when I was struggling for pretty much my last season. I think I hit 200 in my last season, which is a fair way off the pace. But I thought the timeline for me to turn it around was so short. And if I look back, I really had 
that whole season, which of five months, but I had time playing baseball every day. That's, you know, 120 games, 140 games to, to try and turn it around. But I thought the time frame was so small. And that comes back to, as you say, that business mm -hmm. where the way organisations were run, I'm not sure if it's changed a little bit nowadays, but there wasn't so much what we see in Australian sport where it's we're trying to help people and make good people and we want them to understand that we care. It's either you're going to do it or you're not. And I was so hell bent on trying to work work my tail off because I knew I had to turn it around quickly. That if I had stood back and or if I perhaps had had some guidance from some of the guys around the club, but if I if I had stood back and gone, look, I've got time here. I just need to step back, think about the processes that I need to go through, allow myself a month to sort of work through it and get better. Perhaps I might have been able to, but um, you know. So I think that. The moral of that is sometimes overworking can be a bad thing um, and it's, it's hard to find that fine line but just trying to find balance so I think when you're going well allow yourself to enjoy it without becoming that individual egotistical type of a person but allow yourself to enjoy it and, and appreciate and recognise yeah you know that hard work I did has paid off and I feel good about that. Then on the flip side, which this one's a lot harder, when it's going bad, you try to understand that it's, it's not that bad and you're certainly not the only one that's gone gone through it. I mm -hmm. think that's the, the biggest thing a lot of us um, go through, feelings and emotions. And I, I remember laying in bed at night and I couldn't sleep until five in the morning after trying to go to bed at midnight, um, sitting, you know, just thinking, this is done, it's over, when am I going to get released, when am I going to get cut? And in the end, I probably had another four months from when I started feeling that. Mm. So allowing myself the time to, to slowly work on things. And again, I just come back to, to having some balance and having some processes and, and some perspective I think is is huge. It's it's certainly easier said than done. And it helps to have a good, a good club and good coaches around you to help you do that. Um, but that's the biggest thing, I think, just to have, have some balance in all aspects of what you're trying to do. Yeah, nice. Thank you so much for that. And I guess, and, and, and tell me if I'm wrong here, it, it's, it's more than, it's, it's balance and support. Would that be right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we can never have too much support, can mm -hmm. we? So, you know, and that's, again, baseball's a business, the support. And it, there's a little bit, of, little bit of politics within baseball, as in a lot of sports, and, and certain guys get the support. Um, and it's not to say I wasn't supported. I probably just didn't see it at the time because I was so so focused and I, I really retreated back the you know my last last year to 18 months over there I was really self-centered in a sense and I isolated myself because I was so concerned about how I was going and the fact I was just failing I was failing I was failing and one day I could um, be a guy that could go to the big leagues and if they had to put me up in this little period I would, would have done really well but then two weeks later I looked like I shouldn't belong on a baseball field. So finding that consistency is is the difficulty that all athletes face and trying to minimise that best from the worst performance. But um, to get back to your point, the, the support, I mean, it's it really is massive and that's certainly what I try and do with the guys, uh, the younger guys out here with the, the aces is just try and support them as best I can, talk to them, help them where I can, um, which makes a big difference. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for giving back to the youth because they need it. They really do, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff, you know, a lot of the stuff too, you, you're not going to... I suppose you're not going to learn until you've gone through it. So, you know, a lot of advice we can pass on having gone through it. Um, a lot of people might take some, something from it, but they're still going to sort of have to go through certain elements to, to really understand it. But, yeah, hopefully, um, you know, someone gets a little bit out of it and just understand that when you're going bad and you, you're thinking that things are down and you're about to get cut, look, a lot of people have thought that way. And in hindsight, you've had a little bit more time to just step back and perhaps speak to your coach or your mentor or someone at the office of, of the organisation where you're playing and just saying, just talking about it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm struggling with this. I'm, I'm, I'm really down because I think I'm about to be, you know, shown the door, I suppose. And look, sometimes that might, that might be the case and that's, that's life. But without talking about it, we're, we're just going to sit there worried so much that we can't sleep and then it eventually ends up happening a lot longer than what we thought. Whereas if we just stop for a minute, have a chat, um, we've, hopefully we can put a process in place and just work back to you being the best that you can be and, and hopefully that relates to, to you having success and, and achieving your dream. 
Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for all your time um, and your honesty. It's been fantastic to, to have this with you. Um, I'd like to also say on behalf of Brad, um, thank you to his wife for all the support she showed him through all the stuff. Um, I'm sure that um, she'll be very grateful for that. Um, thank you so much and um, good luck with the rest of your career. No worries. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you.